afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the June 30th public meeting session of the Jackson Board of Selectmen. It's 4 o'clock. Thanks for coming. We're glad you're here. Our uh, first order of business is always agenda item number one, and that is to amend and approve the minutes from our June 9th, 2016 meeting. Those minutes uh, will be delayed, so I'd just as soon entertain a motion to table that until our July 14th meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next up is our uh, update on action items. <clears throat> John, you were going to look into the sign at the entrance to the transfer station. Uh, we had a discussion about that at our last meeting uh, on June 9th about the $250 fine because it didn't seem to um, match with. What part of it was going yeah. yeah. I did not look into that, no. Okay, let's just it. carry that over. We are going to um, try to get a meeting with the transfer group sometime this week, hopefully. Oh, okay. So maybe we'll put that on there. Great. Thank you. Uh, okay, Julie Atwell, you're going to get an update from Pat on the uh, park restroom. I do have <coughs> a written report here that probably contains some of that. This is the uh, uh, written report from the uh, road agent would you like me just to read this it addresses that it addresses a couple of items in regards to the water line at the ball field the old line that feeds the dugout building is in bad shape the plastic pipes very brittle has made it hard to fix the leaks so i decided to replace a section of it had to purchase a hundred feet of it anyway and and the job is not completed because you need to get the water precinct to help put the new water line into the existing water meter uh, i'm not sure where the leak started uh, there was a, a power pole and a guide wire and a steep slope off there and so uh, he rented some a mini excavator uh, that he needed to do the job right. As of June 28th the water is uh, all fixed and back on 100% operational so that's as of two days ago. Uh, and in addition, the uh, two trees that were removed from the pond area had to come down due to safety reasons. Willow tree was 95% rotten at the bottom, and the maple by the riverbank was 90% dead and in the way of the new location of the fireworks. Fire chief asked if we could remove that one. Uh, and then we received uh, Gerald's uh, resignation on June 14th. His last day was June 15th. Uh, he's moved on to the town of Bartlett, took a full-time position over there, did an outstanding job over the last six years, and he will be missed, and I, I certainly can uh, second that as well. Uh, and uh, road agent says he has Mike Chapman available to help out filling in the gaps mowing uh, that we can't get done. Any truth to that rumor? Okay. Yep. Good. <laughs> um, Excellent news to hear. Uh, crack ceiling is all done. We were able to seal all of uh, Thornhill Road and the start of Jackson Highlands Road. Paving is started as of today, June 30th, Valley Cross Road. If you haven't been by, it's the Reclaim project this year and it's being reclaimed and graded. Paving crew will be here uh, next Tuesday or Wednesday and to do, to do all the paving in town. And the new Dodge is at HP Fairfield in Concord right now. The body's in Massachusetts and will be at HP Fairfield next Tuesday or Wednesday. And that is the uh, road agent's report, which also includes that piece about the park restroom water main. Uh, in addition, Julie, you were going to resend an e-news post about spraying. We did that. Thank you. Julie Hoyt, uh, you were going to put together a, uh, a letter congratulating Jeff Maynard on his heart transplant. Yes. Thank you for doing that. Uh, other in, uh, notes of interest on our action item sheet. We have some upcoming meetings. Our next selectman's meeting will be Thursday, July 14th at 4 p.m. Uh, our mm. other July meeting will be July 28th at 4 p.m. <coughs> August meetings will be August 11th and August 25th at 4 p.m. All those meetings are right here in this room. We hope you can join us for those. That's all I got for the update on the action items. John, did I miss anything? I don't believe so. Okay, Julie and Julie, did I miss anything? Nope. As far as action items, thank you. 
Uh, next up is agenda item number three, where we are going to be forced to accept a letter of resignation and consider letters of interest. This is a letter of recommendation, or a re resignation, I should say, from uh, Bill Lockhart. Uh, he was at our last meeting on June 9th, but had to submit a letter of uh, resignation on June 13th. I believe this was actually posted in the newspaper in an article that was related to this opening. I'll read it brief, brief. It's a brief letter. It is with regret that I submit my resignation from the Board of Selectmen effective June 13th, 2016. Due to completely unforeseen family circumstances, I have found myself in the position of increasing demands to assist in the support of family needs. These needs will change my responsibilities and essentially make it very difficult to serve in the position of selectman and fulfill the duties required in that work for the town of Jackson. I want to extend my appreciation for the opportunity to volunteer for public service here in Jackson. I support Bob and John in their continuing work and am willing to assist in any way. I have learned much during my time in the position. I want to thank everyone for their kindness. I would encourage the town to support Bob and John in keeping the town moving in the right direction. Thank you again, respectively, Bill Walker. So, I guess I'll look for an invitation, or, or, or a motion, motion rather, to uh, accept Bill's letter of recognition. I'll resignation. make that motion. Right. I'll second it uh, with regret. Yep. All those in favor of accepting Bill's uh, letter of resignation? Aye. Aye. Very good. And if you don't know, uh, we posted the opening a couple different places. We posted the opening in the uh, E! News. We posted the opening physically here in the building, I believe, and a couple other locations. And we also posted the opening in the uh, Conway Daily Sun. We ended up receiving uh, five letters of interest, which we asked for. If anybody was <coughs> interested in serving out the remainder of the term, uh, the term, uh, the remainder uh, of this year, uh, Bill ran unopposed last March uh, to appoint somebody to fill out the term. That person will only be serving until next March. And at that point, that seat will be up for election and before the voters. So in theory, that would put uh, two seats up for election next March is how that works. We appoint somebody for the, um, until the next election, not for the remainder of the term. So we ended up with four or five letters here. We received a letter of interest from Richard Bennett, Jerry Doggerty, Thomas Coffey, Jason Bagley, and Dave Mason. And uh, quite impressive list of credentials that they all had. Three of them are former selectmen. Uh, one had served public service for a long time in another town. One was currently uh, serving uh, in the fire department as a firefighter. Uh, John, what's your pleasure on this? Uh, do you, do you want to talk about it today? We haven't had a chance to discuss it. No. Um, yeah, I've read the letters, and obviously, like you said, there's a good good uh, collection of people who have um, obviously put interest in. And uh, my my move, I think, would if I if I was to choose at this point or discuss anyway, I would like to um, recommend uh, Dick Bennett as a possible finish for the term. Uh, mainly because of his experience in the town. He's been a resident for quite a few years, to say the least, and he's no knowledgeable of the planning board. I hope he stays on the planning board. I would have to uh, remove myself from it because you can't have two selectmen on there, but um, <coughs> I think he has an excellent knowledge base in, in, in both those areas. So you see him serving as the uh, selectman's representative on the planning board, then if we were to take him? Yeah, maybe we... we uh, Divvy up the uh, other departments again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, what I like about that idea is that um, 
you've got your hands full for the rest of the year with the transfer station project. And mm -hmm. in, in theory, that allows you to devote a larger percentage of your time that you give to the town on that project, because mm -hmm. it is a big one, then it seems to make a lot of sense. I mean, they're all very qualified Absolutely. individuals. Uh, Dick is one of the three that is a former selectman. He's currently the chair of the planning board. So um, if that's the way you want to go, um, did you make a motion? No, I'm just opening that up for discussion, but I'd be glad to make a motion to yes. um, elect um, or I guess fill in and uh, have Dick fill in for the uh, open <coughs> Senate seat, um, Senate seat, selectman seat for Town of Jackson for the remainder of this uh, semester. Semester. <laughs> Back in school. <laughs> term for this year. Got it. Not the term, but for the rest of this year. All right. Well, that's a motion I'll second, and I will say that we could have put all five of these names Absolutely. in a hat and come up with an outstanding candidate. I was really pleased with the quality of uh, interest shown for the position. So. Second it. Any other discussion, John? No. Okay. Um, any discussion out there before we vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Aye. We will reach out to uh, Richard Bennett and let him know he was the top candidate chosen and warn him what he's in for. He should probably warn us what we're in yeah, for. Yeah, really. Uh, that's, <laughs> and that's fine. And uh, we'll move on then to the police report. Chief. Thanks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, hello. Excuse me? Hello, hello. Oh. I have three items today. Uh, two of which are informational. I'll let everybody know uh, there might have been some discussion. We had a serious <coughs> crash on uh, Cardinal Road by the falls at the beginning of the week uh, between a bicyclist and our resident wildlife. You know, bicyclist was coming down the hill and actually ran into a bear cub. Oh. So the cyclist was seen by the ambulance and brought to the hospital, received stitches, and uh, it was pretty serious. It was, it was a pretty serious accident. I don't believe there was any accident, any injury or long-term damage to the bear cub. Uh, he wasn't seen afterwards, mm -hmm. and it could have been a lot more serious given that the mother was probably close by. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Handled well, and Barbara Jackson ambulance crew obviously showed up and did, did an outstanding job. Uh, the, the, the second uh, informational piece of note, as we haven't met for a little while, uh, was the bike week and the festivities that happened up here. We saw, we saw a lot more bikes this year. There were 150 to 200 just by the bridge on, on one day, both sides of the road. Uh, and we saw groups of 50, groups of 100 come up through 20, 30 minutes at a time, or 20, 30 minutes in between groups. So it was pretty steady. All that to say that uh, we had no incidents from the bikes. You know, we had no crashes, we had no uh, reckless operations, nothing like that. So it was pretty smooth, it went very well. And the third item on my agenda it gives me, it's one of the reasons why I enjoy what I do. I have two individuals in the police department who have uh, tested, studied, worked very hard to achieve a level of uh, knowledge that's going to afford them to be promoted. And I'm going to promote them today. At this time, I'd like to call Officer Coughlin and Officer Orsini to post. I'm going to try to do this one at a time. Let me know that there is a vacancy for the positional rank of patrolman first class and where this rank has a need to be filled. I am hereby promoting Officer Andrew Coughlin to that rank. Officer Coughlin has consistently demonstrated the knowledge level and professional proficiency required to hold the rank of patrolman first class and has dedicated himself to this town and the residents thereof. Officer Coughlin has further demonstrated a comprehensive and working knowledge of the laws of the state of New Hampshire and applies them neutrally and unbiasedly while understanding and applying departmental policy. Officer Coughlin, through his dedication to the town, his willingness to continually develop himself and to work well in a departmental dynamic, has brought great pride upon himself, this agency, and the town of Jackson.
We have now henceforth Officer Coffin holds the rank of Patrolman First Class. <coughs> Let it be known that there is a vacancy for the positional rank of patrolman first class and where this rank has a need to be filled, I am hereby promoting Officer Warren Orsini to that rank. Officer Orsini has consistently demonstrated the knowledge level and professional proficiency required to hold the rank of patrolman first class and has dedicated herself to this town and the residents thereof. Officer Orsini has further demonstrated the comprehensive and working knowledge of the laws of the state of New Hampshire animal control laws and their respective enforceabilities and applies them both neutrally and unbiasedly while understanding and applying departmental policy. Officer Orsini, through her dedication to the town, her willingness to continually develop herself and to work well in a departmental dynamic has brought great pride upon herself, this agency, and the town of Jackson. And it's also of note that Officer Orsini recently graduated very high up in her class from the prosecutor certification class in Congress. Oh, yeah. Officer <laughs> 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 Warsini, you are now promoted to the rank of patrolman first class and all the positional responsibilities thereof. You don't mind repeating that to me? Yeah. Since state your name once said. I, state name. I, I, Andrew Donald. Do solemnly swear, if you have me. Do solemnly swear. I will faithfully and impartially discharge. I will faithfully and impartially discharge. And perform all the duties incumbent on me. Perform all the duties incumbent on me. As a first class patrolman, first class. As a patrolman, first class. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably, agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution. Agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Officer Orsini, Officer Crawford, congratulations. You're dismissed. <laughs> And as I stated, she did very well in her, her prosecution class and working with me, uh, at least transitionally, she's going to be taking over most of the court cases that, that we have to deal with uh, down in Colorado. Nice. Excellent. Uh, and unless anybody else has any questions, that's all I have. Thank Chief, you. Uh, this is the time of year when those of us who live in or near the village are bombarded by late night fireworks, usually going on for two or three weeks after the 4th very late at night. And I happened to read in today's Jackson E News that uh, some, an individual is only allowed to set off fireworks on property that he or she owns or has written permission. From the these, firework, yeah, these fireworks are usually set off on a golf course or uh, on the, uh, in the park. Yep. Is there any way of controlling that? I mean, every year for two or three weeks, it's one o'clock in the morning, two, and it's not just one, it's, you know. Without an ordinance, it becomes very difficult. Without a fireworks ordinance, that Jay and I have talked about. Um, without a noise ordinance, the same thing. We certainly make an attempt to uh, respond to those calls, talk to those people. But in terms of the golf course, again, that's that's private property, <coughs> and each individual um, condo owner can give that permission or not. As, and so can Jeff Mallet. Not the golf course. Jeff Mallett can certainly do that. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. So I don't know if that exists or not, but we go and we show up. And we, is there anything to really prevent it or stop it? I don't think so. All we can do is be uh, reactive to it and, and go and talk to the people and say it's probably not appropriate. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for putting this all together. And uh, thanks for the job you've done in uh, leading your, uh, your crew. Thank you. The leadership shows.
All right. PC. Agenda item five is public comment. Any uh, public comments for the first uh, portion here? Yes, Joyce. Um, I just wondered if, I'm just curious, that I'm sorry that Gerald left and he was obviously needed, wanted a full-time job. We, we didn't have a full-time position to offer him. I'm, that's a question, I guess. I guess it's obvious we didn't, but I'm, I just want to Yeah. You're, you're right. Yeah, we didn't. No. Yeah. Any other public comments? All right. Well, we'll go on to uh, building inspector's report. Uh, Kevin's not here today. What's that? Kevin's not here today. He's not here. No. Nope. Uh, he didn't submit anything. Uh, but we do have all of the uh, building permits here. And... Uh, I can just go through them briefly. Number one is the uh, map R16, lot 12, and that is to install solar panels on the roof. Homeowner Christopher Rawlings, or that's who it was uh, uh, given out to. And then uh, map R8, lot 13, uh, is to replace flat roof and entrance desk. And after that, we've got um, map R12, lot 55, is to build a new three bedroom, four and a half bath home. Owner is, uh, our permit goes out to Scott Farmer. And we've got map R4, lots seven, Sublot one, two, three, four, five, and six. Five and six. For owner, Wildcat Townhouse Resort Association to rebuild the <coughs> decks on those units. And we've got map R18, lot four, um, uh, contracted with Tamarack Construction to install several new windows and a sliding glass door, and that permit was issued to Joseph O'Donnell. And then finally, map V3, lot 38, uh, again, contractors, Tamarack Construction, and this is to at a third bedroom and bath plus a family room in a walkout basement and that permit has been issued to Andrew Howe. So that's what we have for doings with the building inspector's report. It's quite a few. Yeah. Uh, anything to add to that, John, or questions or anything? Okay. Very good. Moving on then to agenda item seven. New business is a recut as a, a report of a cut, and uh, this looks like the report <coughs> is. We need to sign this, but this isn't something we need to to, to vote on. This is an FYI, right? It's a bill. It's a bill. It's okay. A bill. It's a re and so uh, for forty-two dollars to Stephen Weeder. authorization request here coming from the trustees of the trust fund with a deposit and withdrawal requests so I'll entertain a motion John to authorize the transfer of two hundred seventy five thousand dollars to be deposited into the capital reserved funds and the expendable trust funds per the warrant articles listed listed below count number three fire truck 
capital reserve fund from Article 8 in the amount of $80,000. Account number 64 is the road reconstruction capital reserve fund from Article 9 in the amount of $65,000. Account number 48 is the highway truck capital reserve fund uh, from Article 10 in the amount of $50,000. We've got the uh, transfer station, our account 28 is the transfer station from Article 11 in the amount of $50,000. Account number 58 is for the state roads, Article 15 in the amount of $30,000. So moved. Second. <clears throat> you wanna, any questions or concerns? Seem pretty straightforward. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Another one that I hope I don't screw up, but uh, <laughs> we'll look to entertain a motion requesting the following withdrawals from the trust funds as indicated. $1,512 from the Police Cruiser Capital Reserve Fund to go to Auto Customs LLC for invoice number 69102 dated May 19th, 2016 in the amount of $1,512 and $2,293.18 from the Police Equipment Expendable Trust Fund, which is number 51. Uh, to be paid out to Auto Anything, invoice number 19225196, dated June 14, 2016, in the amount of $886.88. Uh, White Mountain Firearms, invoice number 19901, dated June 16, 2016, in the amount of $1117.70. Uh, Amazon.com, Invoice 102817663 dash 3044242 dated June 16, 2016 in the amount of $194.58. And Amazon.com, invoice number 102142029 dash 8958607 dated June 16, 2016 in the amount of $94.02. <coughs> so moved. Well done. Second. <laughs> um, all those in favor signify aye. by saying aye. 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 Uh, very good. Thank you, Jones. Next up on new business is New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Or no, wait, D Department of Revenue Administration is next up. Uh, form PA-26, just, PA uh, what's that? PA-28. I'm sorry, thank you. PA-28 form, need to uh, sign that for the Department of Revenue Administration. <coughs> Annual request to determine whether you will be utilizing the form, the P-28 form. I think I signed the notice about that. No, it's all right. Uh, let them deal with the uh, printing name of contact person. Change that year on that. Yes. You're not going to make it that long. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Oh. Very good. Uh, New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Agreement for guardrail replacement project and signatures required. Are we expected to make a decision on this, or is this just it's done? This is already done. Is it done? No, I, I mean, so. done in the sense that we don't have to make a decision on it. It's, we're being, they're going to do it. And this is all just related <coughs> to the uh, guardrail repair and replacement project along New Hampshire 16. So they just need us to sign off that <coughs> it's being done. They do, but they do talk about having a, um, a hearing on that. Well, they do. Okay, uh, duration of the project. Project advertised April 5th, April 5th, 2016. 
Construction is anticipated for this project to begin in the summer of 2016, completed by fall 2016. <coughs> Pre-construction meeting, the town will be invited to it, will be held by the contractors prior to the start of construction. In addition to guardrails, it looks like the work will include drainage upgrades, shoulder leveling, minor slope work uh, at uh, three bridge locations in the town of Jackson, uh, two in Jackson and one in Gorham. Minor uh, approach work at bridge number 080094 in Pinkham's Grant. So What's the date of the informational meeting? It doesn't have. Uh, I think they're going to set one. I think. Oh, they haven't set it yet. Otherwise, they get this agreement. Okay. Okay. That would be my guess. Great. You want to uh, make a motion to sign the work zone agreement for Pinkham's Grant Gorham projects? So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. John. Yeah, make sure we figure out <coughs> what that date is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get that out over e news and <coughs> post it and all the locations. Next up, Wildcat Tavern, extended liquor license requests. One of our favorite things to do. You want to come up and join us? So we've got uh, permission being requested to uh, serve alcohol outside your licensed area. Um, and don't have specific dates on here on what we there's got. A re there's a reason we don't have specific okay. dates. I was told if we don't have dates, then it's just an ongoing thing. Okay. We don't have to worry about yeah. it. It's a little bit of a mystery because the tavern um, has always, for 60 years, served alcohol and food on a seasonal basis in the garden. Mm -hmm. um, and when we resubmitted our liquor license, uh, someone at the state assigned that uh, permit to uh, the old game room upstairs above the bar <laughs> where we don't serve food or, or liquor. So um, in trying to go back and forth with the state to figure out what happened, apparently you don't get a do-over. You've got to resubmit all the paperwork. So sure. Jay Henry has uh, come over, he's reissued his occupancy permit, he's looked at that whole area and uh, um, we've gained that occupancy permit and now the state is simply asking for a letter from the town, either objecting to or or not objecting to the tavern continue to serve really food <laughs> and alcohol out there as much liquor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds, Sounds pretty good. Nope. straightforward. Oh, you've yeah. got capacity of 166 people, and then you've got stuff going on in the gardens out back, and that's. Yeah, I, you know, when, when Jay gave us the capacity of 166 people, we, we do some small weddings, some small outdoor events. Really, we've got seating for 32 people outside. We'll do a seasonal lunch um, and a seasonal dinner, weather permitting. That's really our, our, our main interest. Uh, we don't have too many events, but there is a, uh, you know, we have to rent all the chairs, but there is, I guess, a capacity out there for 150 or 160 people. And this would allow you to serve that many people outdoors? Um, yeah, that would, okay. I mean, I don't really have any intent to do that on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'd like to have served lunch today and people had a beer outside if they wanted one. Yeah. So it's really more geared toward being able to continue the tradition of serving lunches and dinners out there through mid-October and the occasional uh, rehearsal dinner or wedding mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. It's not an ideal place for that many people, yeah. but mm -hmm. I guess that's a capacity. Well, one of the things we typically get here in the spring is uh, businesses in town wanting to permission to serve alcohol in outdoor events, and, and the only snag with that is that sometimes the noise produced from those events that includes amplified music uh, can be intrusive on A, other businesses, and B, neighbors around. Is this, is this, is it your intention to like have bands out there? No, no, yeah, we've, we've, We've been through the grinder on the on the music at the tavern ten years ago. No, we're I have zero interest in outdoor music. Okay. Uh, any event or activity that we do out there ends at dark um, and it comes inside. So if we're to have a wedding or a rehearsal dinner, any entertainment component of that would be in the tavern stage where we don't really have Makes music. Sense. You know, yeah. Really, I'm just looking forward to serve, looking to serve lunch and dinner 
out in the tavern as the Sweeney's and the Boynton's have for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. We might have two or three um, outdoor events there that are larger than that. Um, in the time that I've owned it, we've never had anything larger than 50 or 60 out there in the way <coughs> for wedding or Sure. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Any qu other questions, well, John? Or anything? Kind of have an arbitrary, well, a 1030 limit was kind of something we had put on other wedding, you know, uh, parties and things like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, I'm not interested in getting into that uh, whole, you know, can of worms. So we very specifically say to wedding or rehearsal people, those, you know, the typically what we would do with a wedding or a rehearsal dinner at the Wildcat Tavern is we'd have the appetizer and the cocktail hour in the garden, and then we move it all inside. Yeah. yeah. We don't have the extra folding chairs or extra tables so any of the dining and the entertainment portion of it is done inside and, and quite frankly I'm not interested in, in trampling our gardens and the lawns that we've worked hard to restore back out there to want to let people dance on it tear it up all night long so um, I have zero interest in having music dance and entertainment out there I just want to serve lunch and dinner and the occasional small wedding or rehearsal dinner mm -hmm. super sounds, sounds pretty good to me reasonable and responsible to me Anybody feeling a need to comment before we consider making a motion that we vote on? Very good. In this case, I'll, uh, I'll consider a motion to approve. I will make that motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You got You're your welcome. forum here and um, sign off on that. Happy to support your business. For sure. Anyway, Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Thank you. Great talking with you. Oh, that'd be great. Yep, that'd be great. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Old library air conditioner is next up. I don't have paperwork on that. No. Okay. Margie's actually here. Oh, there hey, she is. There's the paperwork. Oh, nice. There's the paperwork. Good. How's it going, Margie? It's going. Good. It's going. Good. Um, what do you have for us? I'd like to ask your approval to put in a split air conditioner heating in it. <coughs> the trust has okayed the money for it, so I've got estimates and it's all we need your approval. Okay, so it's uh, be coming out of the old library trust fund? Yep. Okay, great. And uh, I'm not you... asking for money this time. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to need some. <laughs> Hey, we're happy to spend the uh, old library trust funds money. <laughs> we have no problem with it at all. Yeah. John, you have any questions yeah. about yeah. it? Or? No. I have no questions. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Um, I don't even know if it's not not necessarily our money, but it's our building, so we probably do have to uh, oh, yeah. put out a motion yeah. and second it. John, you want to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion that we purchase a new air conditioner for the uh, old library through yeah. the trust fund. And dispose of the old ones, if you know of anyone that would... Like those window units, okay. which I window know. unit, yeah, but they function very. They function. Okay, mm -hmm. great, cool, fair enough. So we put that motion, up. Need news. Yeah. Mo motion to uh, approve the purchase and to remove the old ones, and I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. Two. Two. All those in favor? All right. All right. Very good. Good luck with the project. Okay. Thank you Thanks much. for coming in. Always a pleasure to catch up with you. Thank you. Um, so, we've got agenda item eight is old <coughs> business. Um, New Hampshire Electric Co-op Spraying is on here. We don't have anything in writing, but that was uh, because we had someone come in and request information about uh, how New Hampshire Electric Co-op is dealing with uh, abutters who would like to contact the New Hampshire Electric Co-op and opt out of the spring, and that's why that ended up on the agenda, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, I don't know, John, if you feel differently, but it's really not our project. Uh, I'm not sure if we've got the capacity to get involved with, uh, with that. Um, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Well, there are, you know, there are people to contact about, you know, opting out, um, and, you know, it's certainly something that a homeowner could do. Um, you know, there was some possibilities of, you know, maybe getting people to band together a little bit, I don't know, doing what, but, um, you know, to kind of, you know, help out the area. I mean, I'm not really 
keen on all the spraying myself. I like to see a lot less of it. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know what to do about it. Other than, yeah. You know, maybe people putting together petitions or something to you know, kind of band together and kind of reduce as much as we possibly can on at least personal property. Right. Well, we know from our not week committee days that what they're spraying is a four to five percent concentrate. And when you look at what is typically contained in Roundup products right. in stores, it's about 41 percent glyphosate by volume. So um, I understand that uh, the co op's plan is to spray a four to five percent concentrate once every four to five years under the power lines, which is in their. Um, right way to do and um, I, I and I and I understand there are people that are, are for and against it I think it's great to find a way to balance out the need to keep the uh, um, electrical grid up and functioning in this town nobody likes it when the power goes out it's a way for us to support that and at the same time if there are individual concerns about that being sprayed on property um, it's no problem opting out. I think the biggest concern I have about being a resource uh, for putting together a list to identify who's opting in and who's opting out is that there might be people who um, wouldn't care for that to be known. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I don't want to violate anybody's Rights, or I don't want somebody taking a look at the list and then contacting people. If they want to do that, they can they can deal through the uh, electrical co-op. I really am not sure what their policy is with that list, but I would invite anybody to contact the uh, name of the project manager and the phone number that we've put out before, and happy to get it out again. Um, maybe we can, you know, put that out again over over e news. I don't know, but. Uh, I think there's there's pluses and minuses to starting to get involved in a project that's not ours, and I want to just make sure we're cautious about it before we, we dive in. Mm -hmm. um, Makes see, sense. You seeing any need to do anything more at this point? Than not at this point. I, you know, I think there's a little more you know, <laughs> investigating things we need to do, maybe on in terms of what our choices may be. Yeah. We have a little bit of time. Yeah. Okay. Before they actually start spraying. I think if this thing really wants to go any further, you know, we addressed the knotweed issue several years ago by forming a committee and doing some work and looking into the facts so people could make informed decisions. And, um, you know, if, if that's the way that uh, it should go, I, 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 you know, I'm happy to reconvene a, a committee or convene another one to take a look at it. It's the same yeah, problem. Have an interest it's a little in different. Yeah. Email, see if, uh, e news, yeah. if there's anybody interested in forming a committee. Okay. Fair Do you want that to come from us? Um, yeah, I think I I think so. I, let's let's I I'm, I'm thinking t for starters let's let's put out there that if anybody has concerns, I'd like to know whether or not the co-op is happy to distribute a list of people who are opting in and out, or whether they consider that private. And then I I prefer to just move maybe from there, um, and and at the same time. You know, once we find that out, that's all that people are requesting. If they can get the information from the co-op, and we don't have to start doing a lot of work here in our office, right. then maybe that's going to settle it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a good start. Okay, great. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Here's your action item. Okay. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, in addition, <coughs> at our uh, June uh, 9th meeting, we had a, uh, someone come in to kind of request that we consider selling property that we had taken through deed due to non-payment of taxes. And uh, it's come to our attention that there was some confusion about the town's position at the last meeting regarding Mr. Richard Levine's proposal concerning certain property that the town owns near Wildcat. Specifically, as president and on behalf of the Wildcat Townhouse Resort Association, Mr. Levine asked the town to consider selling the property either by auction or some other way. The, pr the purpose would be to encourage development of the land in some way beneficial to the town and its residents. First, 
in the short discussion had on record last meeting, there may have been some confusion as to the town's response to Mr. Levine with regard to back taxes owed to the town. Obviously, the town takes the payment of taxes very seriously. If any town real estate were to be sold to or redeemed by any entity or person who owes taxes, it would be in everyone's best interest to have those outstanding property tax debts be paid. To any extent the town would allow the property to be redeemed by former owners, payment of those taxes would obviously be important to everyone in the town. We carefully reviewed the video from the last meeting and want to clarify that we did not in any way intend who owes what in back taxes. We certainly did not intend to specific to a specific person, much less Mr. Levine. To any extent there was a question about this, we would like to clarify it now. Second, as we understood Mr. Levine's proposal, he was suggesting the town either sell the property at auction or perhaps allow any of the entities that once owned the land to buy it back. We understand that Mr. Levine was at least at one time affiliated with some of them. However, not only does the town own property at Wildcat, but it owns a number of other lots around town. We realize that the town does not presently have an overall plan on whether or how to sell or use this land. Mr. Levine is absolutely correct to encourage the town to consider all possible options. Therefore, though we do not have a specific response to Mr. Levine, we plan to continue to discuss this with his townhouse resort association and all other interested parties and town residents. And that is just a response that I wanted to read into the record. And Martha, I can give you that if you'd like to add that to the minutes. John, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that issue? Before no, we that was well on? said. Okay. Any, anybody have any comments out there on that issue before we move on to our next <coughs> agenda item? Excellent. Next up is our second public comment section. Anybody have any uh, public comments? Hearing none. Um, there is no 10. I don't know why 10 keeps showing up. There is no 10. There is no, no non-public session scheduled for today. So we only had nine uh, public agenda items here today. Uh, so I'll entertain a, uh, hearing no more public comments, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I will so move that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, everybody. We're glad you made it. <laughs>